Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Tuesday, 16th July 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Jamaica receives U.S. aid in the aftermath of Hurricane Beryl. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Following an announcement of 2.5 million U.S. dollars in hurricane relief from the United States government, Jamaica is receiving even more assistance in the form of hospital supplies and more as part of the U.S. Navy's continuing promise mission. Courtney Lewis of CVM Live reports. Following the passage of Hurricane Beryl, which resulted in billions of dollars in damage, Jamaica is now receiving foreign assistance. Continuing promise. That's the name and mission of the United States Navy deployment that dropped anchor in Kingston on Tuesday, donating items in excess of 14,000 U.S. dollars to the Princess Margaret Hospital in St. Thomas and the Maxfield Park Health Center in Kingston. Lieutenant Junior Grade Christina Hale of the U.S. Navy shares the mission designed to provide medical aid across countries in the Caribbean and Latin America is now most impactful in light of unprecedented hurricane beryl. Absolutely. So um, a lot of the donations came from non-federal entities. So that's NGOs, think tanks um, that are partners with Southern Command, U.S. Southern Command. And those donations include hospital beds, uh, tarps. Um, It also includes desks for schools and chairs. Um, Very the disaster relief equipment that people would need and also uh, more exactly like we said like hospital equipment as well. In addition to medical supplies the mission will facilitate construction projects veterinary care and training in collaboration with the Jamaica Defense Force for medical personnel to provide patient care across Kingston. Director of Emergency Disaster Management and Special Services in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Nicole Dawkins-Wright, received the donations. Today's donation, especially those CPAP machines, which comes at the most opportune time post-hurricane burial, testifies to the value of partnerships in public health and is a most excellent example of what can come from international cooperation in health and between two countries that have enjoyed diplomatic relations for many decades. This recovery effort comes on the heels of an announcement by Prime Minister Andrew Holness of Jamaica receiving almost 400 million Jamaican dollars in humanitarian assistance from the U.S. government. Courtney Lewis for CVM News. Curtail the crisis. Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey raises alarm over kids involved in crime in Jamaica. TVJ's Anthony Lugg filed this report. Our attitude towards self determines life attitude towards us. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime Fitz Bailey at the Magatti High School in St. Elizabeth on Thursday. DCP Bailey was in a preaching mode as he addressed the graduates raising an alarm about the number of school-aged children involved in crime between 2019 and 2024. 3,621 of your brothers and your sisters, your cousins, your neighbor were killed by young people between 18 and under. That's a crisis in a population of just about 3 million. Other areas of concern are shootings, robberies, rape, break-ins, and assault. If the data is anything to go by, it could spell trouble for the country. DCP Bailey labeled the situation as a crisis. And so it is important for us to understand that there's an urgent need for change, urgent need for empowerment, and for a renewed sense of purpose. 
among the young people. In recent times, stakeholders from several private sector groups have called for more social programs to be rolled out to tackle the issue. While not addressing those calls specifically, DCP Bailey noted that the matter requires all hands on deck. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. It starts with making conscious choices that leads to positive outcomes. It involves surrounding yourself with people who uplift and inspire you and seeking out opportunity for growth and development. You have been exposed to education and education is a powerful tool in this regard. Anthony Log, TVJ News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group. Underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. The hurricane season is now upon us. So we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane. Especially if there are strong winds, rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Bishop Simeon Hall advocates for the cannabis bill that is set to be debated in the House of Assembly in the Bahamas next week. ZNS's Lloyd Allen tells us a lot more. Now, because tonight we understand that government legislators are wrapping up talks here at the office of the prime minister. Those talks coming ahead of what is expected to be the start of debate on the controversial yet anticipated cannabis bill in the House of Assembly early next week. Now, the compendium of bills is expected to cover the handling of, as well as the establishment of an authority for the future cannabis and hemp industry here in the Bahamas. That authority will develop policies, guidelines, and regulation of cannabis for medical, scientific, and religious uses. The body will set eligibility standards for licenses, and those licenses will be granted based on citizenship, age, business name, and whether the applicant has a clean record. Those licenses permit holders to cultivate, manage, and package marijuana. Now, the bill makes no mention of recreational use, but cannabis cards for users are to be issued by a medical practitioner or by the authority or by the medical cannabis committee. Over the years... The Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana has supported the establishment of a cannabis industry. And while former Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Hubert Minister, said efforts would be made towards decriminalization and the expungement of criminal records related to small amounts of marijuana. Now, meantime, our Corval Pfeiffer had a chance to speak with a leading clergyman who once served as a co-chair on the Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana and is lending his voice in support of making medical marijuana available here in the Bahamas. Bishop Simeon Hall's position on marijuana, one, admittedly he didn't always hold, but after serving on both CARICOM and the Bahamas' commissions on marijuana, he considers himself enlightened and has since become a proponent of legislation that would allow cannabis use for medicinal purposes and as a sacrament for Rastafarians. I'm saying the first thing I think we should do is recognize that marijuana is Uh, pervasive throughout our country. Secondly, educate ourselves about it. And thirdly, the medicinal value of it. He readily acknowledges that his position puts him at odds with his fellow clergy. But he believes leaving the status quo unchanged is unchristian, especially when you consider how it both marginalizes and criminalizes young black men. He's also quick to make it clear that he's not promoting the use of marijuana. The young man who got in trouble for a bag of marijuana, how do we restore him and his family? How do we give him, make him right by wiping, if, if, if we could rectify it, if we could fix it, we should wipe the slate clean and he could uh, uh, expunge that, that criminal record and he could work and get a job and go to Miami. 
At age 77, Bishop Hull has found himself facing medical issues as well, now forced to use dialysis three times per week. He makes no apologies about it. He says that he and his medical team are now researching what uses medical marijuana may have for him. All I'm saying is the church should try to be relevant. Now, that doesn't mean you go along with the, uh, with the marijuana smoker. That's not what we're saying. We're saying be enlightened. On his own change of heart on the issue, Bishop Hall tells his fellow church leaders that there is a lot they too can learn from the Rastafarian community. When Bob Marley came here in in 90, whenever that was, I was the one who led that the children, to put that in front of our children, was, was poor. I did that. But now I have a greater appreciation for Bob Marley. For the Bahamas Tonight. I'm Corval Pyfrom. St. Kitts and Nevis's Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, welcomed economic citizens to the Federation and to the first investment gateway summit aimed at creating the opportunity to explore investment options within the country. Attending the 11th July opening ceremony at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort were economic citizens, CBI service providers, investors and officials from the local business community. Glenn Bart of SKN Newsline reports. Prime Minister Drew spoke of recent CBI changes, the sustainable focus for the development of the Federation, and the country's positive attributes for investment that are beneficial for investors and for the people of the Federation. So ladies and gentlemen, citizens, all, these reforms demonstrate our steadfast commitment to good governance and the sustainable transformation of our citizenship by investment program so that all of us can continue to benefit from this excellent, excellent industry. We are resolutely dedicated to preserving the integrity of our program and upholding our esteemed reputation in the international community. Our focus remains on sustainability, good governance, and economic growth, ensuring that St. Kitts and Nevis remains a premier destination for investments. The way forward for St. Kitts and Nevis is clear. We are committed to transforming our nation into a sustainable island state with a diversified economy less dependent on any single sector. This transformation is based on seven pillars. Food security, green energy transition, economic diversification, sustainable industries, the creative economy, COVID-19 recovery, and social protection. To achieve this, we are drafting further amendments to legislate the regional commitments contained in the Citizenship by Investment Program Caribbean State Memorandum of Agreement. The Continuing International Due Diligence Unit will be operational, operationalized this Julan that we are presently in. The Investment Gateway Summit is a manifestation, therefore, of our vision. So over the next five days, we will have the opportunity to connect with like minded individuals. We will collaborate on innovative projects and celebrate the achievements of our nation and for many of you, your nation as well. Over the next three days of presentations, panel discussions and meetings, the attendees will delve deeper into the investment opportunities for both islands of the Federation, confirmed officials from the Citizenship by Investment Unit and the St. Kitts Investment Promotion Agency, host of the Investment Gateway Summit. The opening ceremony was also attended by Dame Marcella Liburd, Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity.
Cotillion Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. 